Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us for Access City Council. I'm Nancy Byrne from KCLB TV. I'm filling in for City of Las Vegas Communications Director David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, an organization committed to saving animals and maybe hopefully helping them find forever homes, plus a community helping seniors thrive in their golden years. For more on these topics and so much more, including exciting news happening in Ward 4, we are joined by Councilwoman Frances Allen Polensky. We want to thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're so much better looking than Dave. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I needed to say it for the record. <laughs> His wife might not agree, but oh, well. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, um, it, it just seems like you've been in office for much longer than you really have because you you just hit the ground running and feels are good. very busy. Yes, yeah. yes, we have been quite busy uh, doing everything we can. We have a large portion of or a portion of Ward mm -hmm. Four that is going to be uh, sold at auction coming up in about six weeks with the BLM. Wow! So we have to develop that and come up with plans what right. it should look like. And they said be aspirational. So I have been. <laughs> and and it's and it's nice because I, I noticed that you and Ward Six Councilwoman Nancy Bruni, who is my councilwoman actually, oh. you do, you team up and do a lot of joint events so we try we have yeah. a similar constituency mm -hmm. geographically and statistically so you know if we can save the city money by doing one event instead of two that's what Look we do that. always looking out for tax dollars and speaking <laughs> of your uh, constituents mm -hmm. uh, you might not know actually where Ward 4 is located some people have recently moved here and they're not even quite sure if they live in the city limits or the county so we have this handy little map to help you out so there you go there's Ward 4 in the green and it is, it rubs right up against Ward 6, mm -hmm. and it's pretty diverse. It's a beautiful area, uh, up kind of in the northwest part of the city. Yeah, that's beautiful. A and an area that's, that's growing. The only area that's able to grow because it's not landlocked, you know, so. Well, Correct. you may be getting more and more constituents <laughs> before you know it. Um, along with Councilwoman Alan Polanski, we are going to welcome a very special guest and someone very near and dear to both of our hearts, I do believe, and we're talking about animals. Joining us for our first segment is Kelly Sheehan. She is with Heaven Can Wait, and you are actually the Community Engagement Manager. That's correct. Okay, so let's first of all just talk about what is Heaven Can Wait? So Heaven Can Wait is uh, a nonprofit that's been around since 2000. Um, we were established as uh, our, our founders wanted to create a sanctuary for animals who needed homes, who were on the streets. But once they kind of realized that the main issue was the overpopulation, they decided to focus their efforts on spay and neuter services, mm -hmm. uh, making them more accessible for pet owners and also providing them for our local community cats. So, Councilwoman, why was this important for you to uh, cover on your show? Your show is very precious. You only get to do it every six weeks. It's and true. to devote a whole segment to this, why is this near and dear to your heart? Well, an animal and, and our animal welfare system is important to us. We hear about the Animal Foundation, what's going on over there. I just want to focus on positive and focus on what services are available for folks. Because I don't know about you, if you've had a pet recently and had to go to the vet, Veterinary expenses have mm. gone up dramatically, dramatically in the last three years, I would say, the even two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, enormous. I mean, to the point where people are are unable to mm -hmm. afford it, you yeah. know, choosing to do something else other than veterinary services for their animal, which is not a good place. Mm -hmm. So organizations like Heaven Can Wait do a great job in, in plugging some of the holes there for folks. Uh, you want to mention the, the low-cost right. services? Yeah, um, our veterinary service is not just spay and neuter, mm -hmm. it's vaccines. We have a wellness mm -hmm. clinic and a spay and neuter clinic. So the wellness clinic will provide vaccines, microchips, which are crucial and do save mm -hmm. lives, um, diagnostic care, any kind of outpatient mm -hmm. procedures for animals, pet owners that just aren't able to afford regular medical care. Since we're a nonprofit and completely funded by the community and grants, we're able to provide that care at a lower cost. So it's interesting because it used to be a sanctuary where you would bring in unhoused pets, um, but you realized, let's get to the root of the problem, and that yeah. is spay and neutering. Can we talk about that a little bit? I think there's misconceptions about spay and neutering. Um, let's just talk about people who think it hurts or it's going to take away how fun they are, how playful they are, and quite the opposite is true. Would you mind addressing that for us? Yes, uh, um, spaying and neutering, uh, not just it doesn't just help uh, cut down litters and um, pets that overpopulation of pets. Mm -hmm. um, when you spay or neuter an animal, it is a surgical procedure. Uh, there is a recovery time, um, but 
it can help a lot with medical issues. Mm -hmm. It prevents completely a lot of cancers yes. okay. um, and uh, more issues that are behavioral. So an animal that is not spayed or neutered, their main goal is to breed. Mm -hmm. So they have these drives to roam, which would cause them to run away more. Um, and they also uh, have behavioral issues caused by that testosterone and that mm -hmm. estrogen that's flowing through. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the best way to even help pets stay in their homes if they have behavioral issues too. Mm. And it does not take the fun out of it. I have two no. pets, they're both <laughs> rescues and they both are, one is spayed and one is neutered. And um, yeah, they're just as playful and, and happy as Absolutely. they can be and probably uh, maybe have saved them from certain uh, cancers. Um, talk about some of the other, well, I mean, we know that spay and neutering is, is vital to controlling the animal population, but once you do have an animal, as you mentioned, Councilwoman, it's not cheap. If your animal's injured, I mean, thousands yes. of dollars yes. in see, veterinary see. bills. Yes. yes. So um, our main goal in our wellness clinic is preventative care. Mm -hmm. So awesome. right now we can provide preventative care like vaccines, um, which if your pet gets ill with something that was completely prevented, preventable, um, that could have racked up a lot of vet bills, but um, again, like with spay and neuter, we want to get the problem at the root. <laughs> so uh, we provide vaccines, uh, we provide um, diagnostics, which can really run up your vet bill at a lower cost, x-rays, blood work. Um, if your pet is ill, we want to help you get the care that they need um, at the lowest cost possible. I know my, our previous dog, we lost him a couple of years ago, was a bull mastiff. Very large dog, about 150 pounds. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful animal. Bigger than his owner. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, um, and I was told that to get him neutered today would be a thousand dollars. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, and that prevents that prevents a lot of owners from yeah, actually. Yeah, the average doing, person even if, can't. Even if they know that all the benefits, yeah. which is a huge part of us, is, is we're very dedicated to education. Mm -hmm. So even if owners know all the benefits and they're very down to do it, mm -hmm. sometimes it's just impossible. And cost is extreme. It, it is, and Kelly, you know, this brings me to a very good point. Sometimes we hear about, and I know the shelters are overwhelmed, and I know that there's so many animals out there that need a forever home, but adopting the pet and the initial fee to adopt a pet is just the beginning. Um, they're, they're, what are some questions someone should really ask themselves if they want to be a responsible, good pet owner? Mm -hmm. So as I said, the education is super important mm -hmm. to what we do. So we treat every animal that comes into our wellness clinic like this is, going, this is their very first exam that they're having. Mm -hmm. And it's also possible that it might be their very last. Mm -hmm. So we treat every animal and every pet parent that comes in like Education is number one. Uh, we look at the breed of the animal, if there are any issues that could be pending uh, when they get older, um, and just let them know that we're there to help provide the care that they would need in the future as well at also the accessible prices. And as a person out there who's thinking about adopting a pet, what, what should we look at? I mean, it, it sounds so glamorous and, and Norman Rockwell, you know, the dog <laughs> playing and bringing in the newspaper, but you need to think about where you live, your income, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. What are some things you might ask people to consider if they are really going to be a, a responsible pet owner? Um, the future, yeah. very, very much the future. And um, just be aware of any kind of potential issues that mm -hmm. you may come across. Um, it's not possible to plan for everything, right. but um, if you educate yourself uh, based on the breed or based on um, even the size of the dog, mm -hmm. um, you kind of know what you're in for so you can make that educated decision on um, what may be the best dog or cat for you. Right, mm -hmm. and and there are different breeds um, that are best for senior Homes citizens. Or or, you know, because if you want, or, you want yeah. a lap dog, or if you live in an apartment, or you know, if you, you have really land want... and they can yes, exactly. Run out. What were you thinking when you got a bull mastiff? <laughs> you know what? They are one of the most wonderful oh. dogs with children. So oh, really? had kids, See, that's and, too, and they oh, my son grew up and that was like his horse uh -huh. <laughs> and oh it was catastrophic times at home when he yeah. caught cancer yes exactly well if people would like to get more information or maybe they want to volunteer um where can yeah. they turn um they could turn to me <laughs> so i'm also the volunteer coordinator if, if anyone's interested in volunteering oh, okay. we do need volunteers because as you said it is event mm. season um, so um, we definitely need volunteers and volunteers in the clinic as well. Uh -huh. If anyone is interested in joining the veterinary profession, um, we have an incredible clinic of full of people that are just 
dedicated and passionate. So um, they could email me at kshehan at hcws.org. Okay. Or even give me a call okay. at 702-582-6169. I'm very happy to speak to anyone who's willing to help. Perfectly. That's why you're the community engagement manager. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Kelly Sheehan from Heaven Can Wait, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you, Councilwoman, for bringing on this important issue. Uh, well, coming up, living life like it's golden. We will show you how Sun City Summerlin is helping seniors or active adults live their best lives. More Access City Council right after this short break. Stay with us. <laughs> Every proper bear knows that the right fit means everything. Especially when it comes to car seats. Oh, really? I just did what any bear would do. So know for sure that your child is in the right car seat for their age and size. I like it. To learn more, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Oh, hello there. Oh, <clears throat> where's that bear? <clears throat> Drop the baby. Thanks everyone for staying with us. Today we're highlighting Ward 4 with Councilwoman Frances Allen Polanski. For our second segment, we welcome another special guest, Deanne O'Rear Cameron. Now, she's the chair of the Senior Citizens Advisory Board for the City of Las Vegas. She's also the commissioner for Nevada's Commission on Aging. So thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you making the time to spend time with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And, and, and Councilwoman, once again, as we talked about animals in the first segment, yes. why was this an important topic, something close to your heart that you wanted to discuss on your show? I do represent Ward 4, which mm -hmm. entirely encompasses Sun City Summerlin. Okay. So seniors are amazing and having an active senior life is what we all are working towards. So uh, Deanne actually served for my predecessor, Stavros Anthony, yes. and I'm so grateful she was willing to stay on board with us <laughs> and uh, continue her advocacy. She really wears lots of hats. I'm she sure. An amazing job. Well, and you know, it's, it's a growing population. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, of course, I'm often reminded we have to call them active seniors now. And you know what? I'm one of them. So yeah. I'm really interested in everything you have to say. <laughs> um, let's just start off talking a little bit about um, Sun City Summerlin. Um, there's a sunsitysummerlin.com. Oh, is that where people can go to find out different activities? Everybody has different interests and they carry them through their golden years. They do. And they have the most robust website. They have so many events at all times, including the ones that we do, yes. the, the council, mm -hmm. our shredding and different mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, and also what I love is they have the entertainment, they have you know their golf tournaments, mm -hmm. they have so many things that it's impossible for me to tell you everything on the website. Right. So I highly recommend everybody go to that sun, sim, suncitysummerlin.com mm -hmm. and just check out all the different uh, captions that they have because there's so much information and they have a lot of really great seminars too, mm -hmm. which is good. They bring in people mm -hmm. for education and that's so important in today's day and age. It is, it is. And and I know Sun City um, is, is a large portion of, of Ward mm -hmm. 4. It certainly doesn't take up all of Ward 4, um, but there are other uh, centers for active adults. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Centennial Hills isn't necessarily in your ward, but it's very close yeah, by. It um, can you it talk to us just a little bit in general about why you do not have to slow down just because you're over 55? Absolutely. Aging in place, it's amazing how people will put uh, you know, a label on it, mm -hmm. but really it's just meeting you wherever you're at, whatever your needs are. And our city senior centers are absolutely fabulous for that. In our word, we have the YMCA that we do a lot with. Mm -hmm. And that's beautiful because the active older adults program has everything you could want. It has, once again, education mm -hmm. for those that don't live in Sun City. Mm -hmm. And they have some wonderful exercise programs. Right. They even have personal trainers for those that are a little bit more serious. Mm -hmm. So it's really about your mindset when you think about it. How mm -hmm. do you feel at the age you're at? Mm -hmm. You know. So that's one of the things I like to really talk to them about if you want to still remain as youthful as possible, start with right here. Right, and you know, um, you, you often hear studies and read articles about how you accelerate your aging by being alone. Mm. And so let's just talk a little bit, aside from activities, just interaction with other people and how important that is. It is so important. During the pandemic, 
we all got mm -hmm. to experience what many of our older adults experience on a daily basis, that isolation. And I think we can all say it was not fun. Right. And so what happens is you kind of lose some of that cognitive. You get that little bit of decline. I don't know if either one of you noticed it. I sure did coming <laughs> out of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I was not as quick witted. And so it's very important that they do get involved in anything. I mean, even if it's, you know, an art class or just getting on Zooms, yeah. right? Getting on Zooms and having some sort of social interaction. We are social beings. So we wanna make sure that that's a part of, if not daily, at least every other day so that we can keep ourselves sharp. And Councilwoman, when you plan events and you do plan a lot of events, <laughs> um, you you notice a, a lot of people 50 and older of turning course. up to the events. Of and course. and do you what kind of feedback do you get from them? Because I think some some people maybe they've lost a spouse or maybe their family mm -hmm. moved to another part of the country. What kind of feedback do you get from some of the active adults on generally very positive mm -hmm. that when we do quite a few events throughout the year directly in Sun City where the entire constituency is seniors and they are thirsty and want more programming. They want more attention. A lot of them are veterans. They love anything right. veteran or Memorial Day related. So uh, we, my office constantly stays in contact with Sun City and, mm -hmm. and tries to have a, a two-way communication mm -hmm. uh, what events we're holding, what events they're holding. Uh, there was just a, uh, an art uh, festival, and now I have Christmas gifts coming to the city from uh, senior art folks. Nice. So it's, yeah. it's a, a really good synergy. And, and you know, we often talk about this time of year and how, again, Norman Rockwell, everyone mm -hmm. thinks it's happy, mm -hmm. but for some people, mm -hmm. it, it can bring back memories of when they did have a larger family or a spouse Loss. maybe they're missing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. How important is it for our, our anyone really uh, to get out there, but especially for people who might be alone or feeling lonely, to get out and try to enjoy some of the activities that come with this time of year. It is so important. That is the time of year when any triggers that they may have, any sadness, any depression is going to, it's gonna come alive. Right. So it's very important to be out there and to be with people that make you happy. Mm -hmm. Don't just go to something that may not be your favorite thing, go to your favorite things, especially in our word, because there's plenty of them. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, it's gonna help take your mind off of whatever incident you might be thinking of at right. that time. And I mean, I deal with you know, the older adults on so many different mm -hmm. levels. And it really is amazing to me to see the difference and if I'm going in um, with entertainment with my husband, we even make sure that we don't do certain songs that mm -hmm. will make them sad because wow. they're going to start missing people because we truly, truly understand the magnitude yeah. of what it can do to somebody. And I certainly wouldn't want that. And I'm an entry level senior. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we all, yes, no, both, same, same. <laughs> yeah, same, same, same. <laughs> well, being on uh, the advisory board, how do you think we, we compare to other mm areas when it comes to catering to people who are good uh, 50 and older? Yeah, that is a good question. Actually, one of the things I love about the city of Las Vegas is that we do have so many yes. of our senior centers and we do have so many activities within all the wards. Mm -hmm. And that is so very important. Yeah. And I actually love that we have a board that all, I mean, if you watch one of our board meetings, you know, on the channels on, on yeah. Las Vegas, you'll see that everybody always has these great ideas mm -hmm. of what we want to see. And when I first got on the board six and a half years ago, we did not have a senior services department. We do now. Yeah, Look We even that. have a case manager. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing a lot of things that some city governments may not get involved in, mm -hmm. but I think everyone here at City Hall knows and understands the silver tsunami that's coming. Yeah. And it was even in, you know, our planning commission meetings mm -hmm. when we were looking ahead. So I feel, of course, because I've been here 25 years, that we're ahead of the game. Yes, I do too. I think we do a good job, don't you, Councilwoman? I do, I, really I do. do. Um, getting back to, um, I, did you call it aging in place? Or yes. Okay. Yes. Um, this, this is a really important topic to me because my father um, ended up in assisted living. Mm -hmm. uh, he fell, he was yeah. mentally, in, but he, you know, he couldn't be by himself. It's but a common some story. People, yes, yeah, but I believe common. that some yes. people can live in their own environment mm -hmm. as long as they have someone to check on them. Um, they don't need to be whisked off. In, and and there are opportunities for people to, to volunteer to visit or to yes. volunteer to, you know, check on a neighbor. You don't even have to be formally volunteering. Mm -hmm. Just check on a neighbor. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I love that you mentioned that because that is so important. If everybody did that, no matter what age, mm -hmm. a lot of things could be handled yeah. in a much better, you know, we'd have better outcomes, mm -hmm. right? We'd find out things before they happen. With aging in place, it's really about what makes your heart happy. If you want to stay home, there are plenty of resources to do just that. Yeah. And that's what I pride myself on doing is helping them to find all of these resources. Some of them are covered by their insurance, mm -hmm. depending on whether it's Medicare, Medicaid, or an Advantage plan. Some of them are not. Mm -hmm. And when they are not, it's a matter of finding out, you know, what specific hours are the things that they're wanting their needs with. Maybe it's to cook their meals for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, maybe it's some light housekeeping. And we have so many companies here and we have such a beautiful community of what I call senior industry mm -hmm. professionals. And they really do work together well. They play very nice together. They play so, nice in the yes, sandbox they together. Do. That's nice. They do. We can all learn from them, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, um, just to let people out there know, um, we're, we're specifically talking about Ward five, uh, 4 mm -hmm. right now, but we do have Leeburn, um, Centennial Hills, East Las Vegas Community Center has a tendency to uh, cater mm -hmm. to um, seniors. Mm -hmm. seniors. Um, and if you want any more information, you can go to 229-PLAY, 702-229-PLAY. That's a little plug for our, um, yeah. our little um, Parks and Rec. Um, Doolittle is another uh, senior center or active adult center, uh, but they're under renovations right now. But there's plenty to do. Where can people yes. turn if they want some information on where to go, what to do? There's not enough time. But okay. anyway, <laughs> but anyway uh, our meetings, uh -huh. so our, our senior meetings, our senior citizen advisory board meetings are the first Thursday of every month okay. at 1 p.m. here at City Hall. Okay. And I highly recommend you come because without your public voice, mm -hmm. It doesn't give me as much as I'd like. Mm -hmm. When we hear it, we know we can go after it. We get the data. Also, uh, ageinplace.org this week, they have Aging in Place Week. It's Aging in Place Week right now. Very topical. There is yep, so exactly. much education. No sales, just straight education mm -hmm. if you go to that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everything from when to take the keys yeah. oh. to, you yeah. know, yeah, that's one of the ones I'm I looking know. forward to, uh, to, you know, how to have the discussions, yeah. right? Those discussions you don't want to have about exactly. what the plans are going to be because you don't want to think about right. that. But you have to have them. Right. And you have to be empathetic because mm -hmm. how would you like your car taken away? But yeah. You know, and Councilwoman, <laughs> you say just exactly um, what Deanne said is that unless we hear from you, unless you hear oh. from a constituent, mm -hmm. you don't know what mm -hmm. they want, what they need, and what's missing. But so Input is invaluable. Mm -hmm. You can't represent people yeah. unless you hear from them. You yeah. have to have that dialogue. Okay. All right. Well, Deanne O'Rear, Cameron, thank mm -hmm. you so much for thank being you. with us. I'm glad thank you me. stayed <laughs> past Stavros Anthony, and you're, you're, you're still in a great world with her a, back. a wonderful <laughs> um, so ambassador. Grateful. Yeah. So grateful. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well, we're going to take another quick break, but get your planners out because you don't want to miss what we're going to talk about next. We've got some great events coming up in Ward 4. Stay with us. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Hey, let's check out this park. Oh, wow, that's really cool. To find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back, everyone. We are talking about some great upcoming events in Ward 4, because as we said earlier, Councilwoman, so Once time. October hits, it's like whew, you get through all the holidays and the weather's nice. We have the best weather in October. We do. Any, we do. Anywhere. I laughed when I moved here and people said, I got to get my fall clothes out. I'm like, it's like 80 degrees, you know. But anyway, <laughs> for us, it's cool. Let's dive right in. You've got a um, Sun City document shredding event and yes. an RX pill drop off. Correct. And I remind the folks out there that no batteries, nothing combustible, no cell phone. It happened my, my first know. event. Uh, was a shredding event and someone put us left a small battery 
in right. the stuff and the fire department had to come out and of course I knew the whole fire department that all the guys yeah. that showed up and it was embarrassing yeah. it was definitely You're like uh, it wasn't me yeah I, I was like it. shame yes. shame what are you doing your fire wife causing fires like, oh <laughs> so for, to my friends in yes. Sun City no batteries nothing combustible just paper and the medication in that Ziploc bag right right so we don't want your amber bottles right. we don't want anything else but the actual it's medicine. It sounds a little bit picky, but you know, the bottles are cumbersome. So just yeah. put them in a Ziploc, recycle your bottles, bottles at home and, mm -hmm. and we'll get rid of it because you don't want it in the water system or falling yeah. into the wrong hands. So that's going to be Saturday, November 18th, 10 to noon at 9107 Dell Webb Boulevard. On the heart of Sun City. All we'll right. see you there. Uh, well, it doesn't stop there because we've got <laughs> Halloween coming up. Tell us yeah. about that event. Uh, the Trunk or Treat at the Y mm -hmm. is always a very popular event. It will be my first one since elected, but uh, we'll be Trunk or Treating, giving out all the candy and uh, costumes. Costumes, costumes mm -hmm. are preferable, of course, and bring your big pillowcase right. for uh, for the hall. But uh, great event for the children. Uh, it's right off uh, North Durango. Uh -huh. We'll look forward to participating. And it's safe and it's fun. Yeah. And I couldn't get her commit to commit to <laughs> wearing a costume. So I did it all last I, year. I, I was actually Wendy Peppercorn <laughs> last year from the movie The Sandlot. You got and, it. Uh, my husband was Quince uh -huh. uh, and we had a whole baseball theme. It was great, but uh, he hasn't fully committed this year. I'm working on him still. Sandlot, you're <laughs> killing me, Smalls, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, you got it. So that's, you know, it's fun to go to those trunk or treats mm -hmm. because you know that they're safe. You know that the candy yeah. is coming from a safe place mm -hmm. although I love the trick-or-treaters coming to my door and I really I get sad when there's not a whole lot of them but this really is a great safe and fun environment so yes um, here's uh, an event that I always think is great to promote it's meet the councilwoman mm -hmm. but this is a uh, a very informal way to meet you it instead is. of having to come down to City Hall. Tell us about that. That's coming up on October 20th. No appointments needed, no RSVP. Just show up at the uh, Durango Hills YMCA. Um, I'm usually there in the front vestibule talking to anybody who wants to talk. Mm -hmm. Some people have city issues. Uh, I really call City Hall Grand Central Station for government. Yeah. People come and they have issues with the federal government. They have issues with state government. And uh, it's part of my job to triage that and say, you need to go here and I'll give you that name and phone number. Or you need to go here. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's a great way to, to have that dialogue that... Uh, Everybody deserves. Right, without having to get in the car and try yeah. to find parking well, downtown. And, um, we're you know, under construction. Don't even exactly, bother. Yeah. Exactly. I come to you. Yes, there you go. It's right there. And, you know, it's the, the thing also that's great about it is that it is an informal setting. So, yeah. And I always say that local elections are really kind of more important than national. They're all important. Correct. But you can have your ear of your local representative as opposed to trying to right to Washington. So yes, take advantage everyone and go meet your councilwoman, yeah. Frances Allen Plansky. Well, gosh, this went by fast, didn't it? It does always. Two great guests. And of <laughs> course, you are always wonderful to interview and talk to and you're so busy. So thanks for making time for Access City Council. I think Dave needs to be worried. Oh, <laughs> I, think, I think he's got it covered, but I appreciate it. You made it very easy for me. You know, we always want to hear from you. So if you have something that you would like to share with Councilwoman Flansky, please know that you can find her on Facebook and Twitter. You can also contact her office at 702-229-6405 or send her an email, fpolanski at lasvegasnevada.gov. And don't forget, you don't want to miss our next show, which is beginning October 19th after this one, with Ward 2 Councilwoman Victoria Seaman. You can catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. You can't get away from us. Also, watch for our QR code after the show to subscribe to our newsletter. And don't forget, you can always watch us live on the Internet at KCLV.TV. Thanks again, Councilwoman, for being with us. Always good to see you. And thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you next time.